Most adult violin learners struggle with bow hold tension at some point along your violin journey. And if you allow that tension to stay, it's gonna put a ceiling and a limit on your progress. I know because I learned violin as an adult and I struggled with this a bunch myself. My name is Jenny, by the way. So a quick story about when I was getting started, I was trying to, I had played the guitar before, so I got some books thinking that I could sort of self-teach like the guitar and uh, quickly ran into some, some barriers there and got my first fiddle teacher. And through my fiddle teacher and the books, I had developed my first bow hold. And the way that I got my bow hold was I looked at the pictures in the book and I tried to put my fingers in what I thought that looked like. And um, what I'm doing right now is pretty pretty similar. Let me see if I can get it, my old bow hold. Um, it was something like this, something like this, yes. And um, I was a little grabby with my index finger. Uh, these fingers were squeezing uh, with the thumb this way and the pinky tended to be a little bit too straight. And I uh, it started at the end of high school. Um, going into college, I was not nearly good enough on the violin to audition and get into the music program yet. So I was, I was an art major, but I had already decided that I wanted to play violin professionally. So I was trying to practice like crazy in my free time on the side. And I ended up finding a new teacher from the music department a student, but kind of like one of the top hotshot students. And I went to the first lesson and I was struggling with a lot of things. I was probably a year and a half in or so. Um, and I remember at the year point when I had been playing for a year, I was really frustrated because I, I just, I had said to myself, I know I'm learning like tune after tune and so many Irish tunes now, but not a single one of them sounds any good at all. So I sat down with this teacher, I told him my frustration, played him a little bit, played for him a little bit, and he said, well, first of all, your bow hold sucks. Ugh. And it just hit me like a knife in the heart. I did not take it well at all. I left that lesson feeling really heavy and full of dread, like I'm gonna have to change this bow hold. And he showed me a way to hold the bow a little bit more relaxed, but I tell you what, it was so difficult to change that habit. And if I went to play any of my old tunes or just pick up the bow, it would always go back into that tense bow hold. And that was the only way that I could play. And then for a while I was sort of, you know, alternating between the two and I'm having a flashback right now of another memory of playing at the Wharfside Gazebo at the Texas Renaissance Festival. This is before we had any amplification. It was before we were on the big stage and I would just get the violin out for a couple tunes. Thankfully I played guitar, so I always had that to switch back to when I would get too nervous. But I was playing a tune for people and the bow was just slipping. I could feel it just slipping out of my fingers and I felt like I wasn't gonna make it to the end of the tune without the bow just falling out of my hand. Other times it did fall out of my hand. Um, so all that to say, I know how it feels to have to change your bow hold and it can be done. So here are my main bits of advice for developing a good bow hold in the first place and then what to do when it inevitably gets a little bit of tension and you have to do a bit of a reset. So for starters, for getting your bow hold, um, I'll just start by saying, it's better not to think about it in right or wrong. You don't wanna think about it like there's a correct spot for each finger, but instead you want the fingers as close to a relaxed position as possible, and you wanna be able to hold the bow with the minimal amount of tension and squeeze possible. And so to get that, there are tricks of where to put your fingers obviously and how to hold it, but the goal is relaxation, not correctness, right? So the way that we get the most relaxed technique, whether it's bow hold or anything else, is by being in a process instead of going for a result. So the mistake that I made early on is I was going for the result of trying to match my hand to that photo rather than having a process 
of getting a relaxed hand and keeping that throughout getting the bow into my hand. So I have several videos of this for free here on YouTube. I just recorded a short that's gonna be up. So basically all the resources for this process are gonna be down in the video description. I'll, I'll put some free YouTube links there so you can see some relaxed bow hold processes. Uh, if you want the full version that I teach to my students, that's gonna be in Jenny's Daily Lessons where you can sign up um, also in the description. And that just unlocks everything that I teach and all my resources. So that's if you, if you already know you wanna work with me and dive in, you can sign up for that. And then there's also a free week that shows a bow hold process that's a bit more extensive than what's here on YouTube. So you can pick, uh, pick what's right for you there to get your bow hold process. And, okay, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes. So now that gives you your process. Now, what do you do when you find that you're going down the road? Because inevitably what happens is you get your perfect relaxed bow hold and then time goes on and you're learning more and more songs and you forget to do the process every day and we're focused on learning the songs, which gets us back in that results oriented thinking again and then the tense bow hold comes back in. It's very easy for that to happen. So I recommend at least every three months during your first many years, for your, for, for your first <clears throat> one to three years of learning the violin, have a week that's just a bow hold reset week where you go to whatever those videos are that are your bow hold process videos and my students, tend they tend to make their own process based on these options that I give to you, right? So you revisit what your bow hold process is. And then during that week, you'll just spend five minutes at the beginning of every practice where you set a timer and you do your bow hold process. And then take that bow hold and just play on open strings in the mirror. And that's a great exercise just for anybody in the first several years of violin. Most people need to practice more just bowing on open strings than we tend to, uh, which is, it gets boring, right? So that's what the five minutes is for. You set that timer and you know that if you can just dedicate that to dedicate that time at the beginning to just making sound and noticing if any tension is creeping into your bow hold and releasing it, and then once that's done, just go back into the body of your practice as normal and don't worry about it while you're playing your songs and your other things. If you really wanna get after it and reinforce it and you're finding this tension is just really sticking around, then set that timer for five minutes again at the end of your practice and just give yourself another little window there to just think about your bow hold as a process and playing on open strings. If you found this helpful, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel Again, highly recommend if you haven't yet, sign up for at least my free mini course in the description where you'll find some other resources as well. And happy fiddling.